going live. There we go. There's live on my end, yeah. Good afternoon, everybody. It's uh, Comic Crack, and this is a very, very special occasion. We have the the one and only Johnny Zero from uh, everybody's comments hey. section. Hi, how's it going? Good. This is it. That's it. You're now on YouTube. There's no yeah. turning back. You've, yeah. you've shown your face. It's all over. Yeah, it's all over. Yeah. Um, so, so today we talked about this, uh, uh, Jay-Z was the guy who kind of first turned me on to, to Helix, uh, sent me some comics, um, and then kind of looking around the city, I, I just kept finding more and more and more of these mini series. Mm -hmm. Um, and we've talked about this for a while, like just kind of chatting about the books and I've wanted to kind of spotlight this imprint, I guess, for a little while mm -hmm. uh, it, it was pretty short-lived and there wasn't a ton of um there wasn't a ton of titles i think it was two years is that what it was 96 to 98 or something around yeah, that there? sounds about right I, I think the most any of them hit was 12 issues mm -hmm. yeah and that was like the michael moorcock or i guess the the exception is trans metropolitan right didn't that one start at helix yeah and but i think maybe maybe it's around 12 issues in i think they switched to vertigo okay yeah um, i found out that it's the the, the editor uh, Stuart Moore is one of the founding Vertigo editors. So the I talked to Damien about it a little definitely. because he was um, uh, he ha he was reading some of the stuff when it came out. Okay. Yeah. And so I think yeah, but it's uh, I guess yeah, he he uh, started it as a I guess it's sort of an attempt to do another kind of Vertigo. There's really not a lot of information about it. It's kind of interesting. Like it seems yeah. that um, it originally was supposed to be called Matrix, and That's then right. yeah. but they the learned movie about movie. the film was being made, and so they switched the name to Helix. But I mean, outside of that, it's really I I, <clears throat> I feel I'm I'm I think you're probably similar. Like I like about comics of this. There's something like they're just so like unimportant on the sort of overall everyone's radar that it's just like if they yeah. fail it's just nobody cares it just just yeah, yeah. Shot out. it's like nothing you know like there's no sense that it's important in any way or anyone should ever know about it there's no mm -hmm. the only per thing i've ever found is um there's like a comic uh resources page or something like some guy some guy was writing saying that he was going to do the helix files you know like he sort of decided like helix is really interesting and i'm going to write about every Helix book and then I think because he calls it like the Helix files and I think he just burnt out on he just did uh, Cyberella and he just and he that was it that really. really. <laughs> that's hilarious yeah well I mean it's, it's it's funny to me that something like this could exist and like you're saying I mean completely goes on the other editor because I mean mm -hmm. until you sent this I didn't know that this imprint was even a thing um, I mean mm -hmm. I guess not that I would because I think as you had said too around this time I, I was not collecting comics I wasn't reading yeah, comics I mean, in, in mm -hmm. the mid to late 90s I mean I think actually most of the 90s I was completely like nothing not even like Peter Bag stuff or maybe some Peter Bag stuff early 90s but yeah I mean there was really nothing on my radar whatsoever so I mean I would have completely missed yeah. that two-year window that this existed but I agree with you like I love this kind of stuff for exactly the same reasons it's just Hey, let's try something. Let's do this, and it's completely under everybody's radar. And it lived, and then it failed. Who really cares? It didn't really matter too much. But yeah. then getting a chance to look back on it, and especially finding all the stuff at once, is really great to kind of get in this headset of maybe what they were trying to do when you can see all the work that they've done, right? So yeah, and I mean, it's I think it's really interesting um, as science fiction stuff because, like. I feel like only now are we starting to see comics that are, you know, like science fiction novels have been for a while, you know, where they're really, you know, deeply kind of weird and yeah. Like I think that Snowfall book is a bit like that and um what was the one? Ar Arcadia, I think or Okay, yeah. Yeah, that was another. You know, like but most of them are still kind of more like sort of sci-fi action movies, you know, like aliens mm -hmm. and they're fighting aliens or whatever. Like they don't really get into this sort of, the sort of strange ideas I think that um, he, like Helix was trying to do. Yeah. So from well, that perspective, even, it's cool. For sure. And I mean, even with the ones that we're going to talk about, um, which we'll get into a bit later, but 
there's almost this feeling some of the sci-fi the way that it works for me so well is that it almost seems to be kind of this internal struggle as opposed to like you're saying like this huge battle against some alien force yeah. I mean, there's a couple of themes in these two that we're going to talk about that really stood out to me about like identity and and even gender to some degree that mm -hmm. i find really a, a little more interesting because it's this almost uh uh I don't know, maybe it's too much to say, but it's almost this Yadorowski type of approach to this internal struggles that are just manifesting themselves in these sci-fi kind of themes or whatever, you know, or in this sci-fi universe and stuff, which yeah. I don't know, I find kind of appealing. I mean, I like the big blow up and alien killing type stuff too, but this, there's something a little more to it philosophically, I guess. I don't yeah, know, yeah. maybe I'm overthinking it a little, but. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're interesting. They're like, you know, it's sort of that perfect combination of being like, I don't like, I don't know that they really exactly work, but they're really yeah. exciting because you, you know, you're sort of like, Oh, there's this thing and it's got all, you know, like all, they're trying to do all these crazy things. It's really interesting. And you know, they're just totally forgotten and in dollar bins, you know? <laughs> so it's yeah, like, totally. yeah, you can get really like kind of, I mean, it's the only thing really that I can think of that I've asked, you know, if I'll go to like conventions and stuff and be like, you know, oh, do you have any Vermilion issues? And they're just like, what are you talking about? You know, yeah, yeah. Ask, you know, some old guy and he's just like, no, I never heard of it. I don't know what you're talking about. And mm -hmm. I'm sure a lot of them, they were for sale, but probably stores dropped them after the first couple issues didn't sell or whatever. And Yeah, they seem like one of those kind of things that there wasn't enough people asking about it. And, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, they, they just wouldn't have carried. Uh, La Rasa says, hello, hello, La Rasa. You're, you're here. Hi. <laughs> Uh, so I guess briefly, the ones we were going to talk about today were, and I think I have sitting here, um, one that was a really surprise to me how much I enjoyed it, Starcross, yeah. um, which is just a three issue one. And then I think independently, um, I was going to talk about Black Lamb, because I know you oh, haven't okay. read that one. And then you were going to talk about which one? I can't remember. Oh, yeah. I was going to talk about Time Breakers, but I forgot to actually yeah. bring it. <laughs> oh, that's, that's fine. I mean, I you know, sure we, can... we don't have enough time to do all of them, but yeah. Yeah. I think we'll start with the kind of the ones that we've read together first, and then, you know, we can kind of branch off there depending on the time kind of thing. Sure. Um, so do you want to talk a little bit about, like, how you... So, I mean, like you, like you said, or like I said, none of us were reading kind of comics at this time. So how did you first stumble across Helix? Was it literally just flipping I, through bins and, hey, what the hell is this? No, I think I'm trying to remember. I think I was trying to find out. It was either <clears throat> trying to find stuff on Elaine Lee and finding out about Brain Banks, or it was uh, looking, in, looking for stuff by Matt Howarth. Okay. And either way, I think I would have found one and then realized the other and been like, oh, what is this? And I, I'm a big Lucius Shepard fan, so finding that he did a comic on it and Rachel Polak, like all that stuff together is like, for sure, you know, I think, I don't exactly remember the order of it, but it was something like that, digging around. Like, um, I, like I find a lot of these comics, they're not well reported, right? Like there's no, yeah, yeah. because there wasn't the internet at that time, there's just, not a lot of stuff on it. So, I mean, I found your channel, for instance, just looking up. <clears throat> I think I wanted to get Ike Garuda, and I didn't know if it was any good. Uh -huh. I, I was just like, I think you had the only <laughs> link on Ike Garuda, like, you know, on the really? internet, right? Wow. So, yeah. yeah, I think that that's, I think that's about, so I mean, I, I'm, you know, there's probably be people who will be looking for Helix and will be the only. <laughs> yeah, this will be the one. The absolute video. source, right? The authorities <laughs> yeah. on Helix. <laughs> These two Canadians talking about yeah. Helix. Um, I'm just looking up uh, <coughs> a bit of information here. Um, I can't remember what I was going to ask you following up to that. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that's – you're so you're a big Matt Howarth fan, right, from before, right? So that's because you mentioned, obviously, that I was one I just like him. I think uh, – I don't know that I'm a huge fan. I think I just sort of found him and was like, oh, this guy does cool stuff. And then, you know, kind of looked for more and uh, – the series I liked that I read was uh, here. I got it here for you. This Keith uh, Lama. Uh, it's it's sort of similar. I would say it's a little less um, 
Like it's a little more normal maybe than uh, Starcross. Starcross is him kind of going a little further, I think, towards uh, more kind of hard sci-fi, and it's yeah, yeah. a bit weirder. But I mean, Keith Long is still pretty, pretty strange, and yeah, they have a kind of similar character. Like the the girl in Keith Lama is, you know, sort of independent. I think like uh, what's her name, Delta, in Starcrossed. Um, uh, I think so. Yeah, more of his normal like it's it's black and white. You know. Okay. Yeah. Um, this is more normally, I'd say, what his stuff looks like. Mm -hmm. He's kind of yeah, like got a couple issues of that one there. Okay. Yeah. He does, uh, uh, he seems like he just is constantly working. Um, mm -hmm. Now he does, like, digital comics, and I don't really read those, so it's kind of too yeah. bad, but, you know, he's still plowing away on stuff all the time. But I think he just, you, you get, like, PDFs now. That's what he's selling. Oh, okay, really? Um, but, I mean, I don't, I mean, it's incredible, really, that he's done so much comics in this way, like, so many that's, uh, you know. I mean, this Keith Lama's on Fantagraphics, but a lot of them, like I've got this thing here. I think this is his own company, this Houseki Studios. He's a lot of these kind of like, sort of like a magazine size. I think he has a lot of like fanzine stuff. He seems to have started awesome. in like the early 70s. Mm -hmm. um, I Yeah, I, I mean, I think he's in early heavy metals as well. He's sort of... Like, maybe he's a bit like Richard Corbin, like, just a guy that's always around. All over the place. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, I'm, I'm sure I've seen him in, in my past with, like, Drawn and Quarterly or, or some of those right, right. type of magazines at the time. Because, I mean, as soon as I saw his art, uh, again, it just reminded me, sparked right away. I haven't looked into him specifically to see all the titles he's done, but I'm sure I've seen him in some of those anthology magazines over the years, too. Um, and yeah, that's something I mean, I bought something the other day in a... There was like a zine thing in Hamilton and uh, I went to it and there was a guy there who was just selling, you know, he was selling comics and he had a, you know, a bag that was like for 20 bucks. What was it called? Like Blind Bat or something? I don't know if you know them. No, I don't. No. I think it's like a Hamilton underground comics thing. Um, That's and cool. so yeah. I bought the like, you know, collection for $20 of everything they published. And uh, yeah, there was some Matt Howard stuff in, <laughs> you know, the, one of the anthologies, right? Called yeah. Wave. Yeah. Wavelength, I think, or yeah, wavelength, oh, I think it's called. Yeah, There's two in that, and there was really, a yeah. in that. I think, yeah, yeah, that's my impression of him that he's just kind of always, you know, doing stuff and somehow found a way to always get, you know, get his stuff out there no matter with the format. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I like him. I like that about him. I like that he's really like has his own, like, I mean, maybe like uh, Richard Corbin a bit too. Like, there's a something personal about his art that is really kind of interesting, you know, like it feels, it doesn't feel like it's modeled on other artists. Like maybe it is in some loose way. Like, you know, maybe he might've been really into Mobius or something and he's like, Oh, I'm going to do it. And then, so it's like his own abilities mixed with this. I don't, I have no idea, but it just, there's things that he's doing that don't feel like they're in the tradition of other comics artists. Yeah, for sure. He's really got like an intense, his own voice, no doubt. Yeah. And I think mm -hmm. that's one of the things that when I first was kind of looking at his art and stuff that almost, it didn't turn me off, but it really, it took me a little to get into his style. Yeah. Um, but once I did, I mean, it completely worked for me, like completely. Yeah. Worked, and it really feels just fantastic. Um, one of the things I was going to say about both of these that we're talking about, um, they have a, uh, with the Helix titles, they, they do what, I love about some of this stuff is they have like a little write up where it's the artist talking to you sort of thing. Yeah. And they both, Elaine Lee and him both said similar things of like, like they were, especially Elaine Lee did about, she was sick of some science fiction that centered around females and they were always with these specific themes. And this was her mm -hmm. chance to do something different. And he kind of mirrors that in, in so much as like, I just have always liked doing my own things and this was just another opportunity. So it really mm -hmm. seems like, even more so, I mean, I guess super similar with Vertigo, like we were saying, that it's it's about the independent creators and it's characters that you own, possibly. Um, I wondered that if they had a creator own deal. Yeah, it seems like they it seems like they might have, and then just kind of instead of having it whatever, it was just kind of more specific to sci fi. But I'm assuming that it did actually, and that's a good point because I mean I didn't read that anywhere. I'm just guessing that that's what it was, you know. 
there doesn't seem to be any like sense that they're part of the DC universe in any way, or that yeah. you know, like they've never dragged any of these. Not that they're you know, but I mean, you'd think that Cross somebody would be like, oh, you know what, we want to stick like you know, we want to stick Delta into like some some new book. Yeah, 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 yeah. That would be just the strange just fight, thing. like uh, yeah, Green Lantern or something. Yeah, battling alongside Watchmen or whatever they're doing now these days. Um, <laughs> so I mean. Was so. This is something that you read early on. So, what were your? I guess yeah. we'll just jump right into this. What are your thoughts about uh, uh, Starcrossed overall? Uh, I really, I think it's really cool. I like that. Um, well, one thing I was going to say about his art. I remember reading uh, an interview with Grant Morrison once, talking about Cameron Stewart, uh -huh. where he said he thought like Cameron Stewart was the perfect, you know, comic book artist because he's uh, his. When you read his books, you don't know where they might go. Like they could, they can be really serious. They could be like you know really funny. You know, like when you read Sea Guy with that with him, you don't under you have no real way of knowing if like, you know, is this going to get really dark? Is this just a joke? Mm -hmm. Like how? And that he said he was a, kind of the perfect comic book artist that way. And I feel like Matt Howarth is kind of like that. Um, yeah. So reading this, you're kind of. To me, that seems to be two things at once. One is a sort of like, uh, you know, a kind of 90s romance story, you know, about like, a, you know, an independent woman. And then the other side of it is this really kind of, you know, deep space science fiction where it gets really abstract. And yeah. he sort of connects the two, I think, by... I mean, you know, I, I, what I get from it is it's sort of like she's so independent that she doesn't, she doesn't even want to be part of the human race. So she will embrace the void of space rather than, you know, the sort of awfulness of like human, uh, anything contact. to do with humans whatsoever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 And that's the sort of bridge between these two. Yeah. These two worlds or whatever. Um, uh -huh. but yeah, I really liked it. I mean, I think that, um, <laughs> to me, it would be, I would say it's either Star Crossed or um, Time Breakers that I think is the, for me, at least of what I've read so far, the most successful of the Helix books. Um, yeah. That I think that it, uh, yeah, they both they're both ones that I think really work, and they're all the rest of them. I, from what I've read at least, they're either, you know, maybe not that interesting, or they're really interesting but don't quite work, or there's some kind of you know, there's some kind of thing where you're like not completely yeah. satisfied with it. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry. I, I like the like. like I, I really like this as well too. Um, and one of the other things that I found really worked for me was like even just small touches um, from like a design standpoint, but also just from a reading standpoint is all the stuff he did with the pages in like the last yeah. dish issue where things were just off kilter just a little bit. So it wasn't quite, um, There's a, you're not there's sitting a and you're having to like flip the book upside down or anything like that, but <laughs> these canted angles, these like Dutch tilts or whatever, that I, I just yeah. I found really worked a hell of a lot. And that the page layout in general and the colors and it's him doing the coloring too, right? Oh no, it's not. Chris Chuckery colors and separates, uh, I, I just think, like, for an overall design of a book, I think it looks incredible. And the more I got into his art style, the more that worked for me. Um, and and like you were saying, I, I love the touch of her, you know, wanting so much to be away from the human race that she's willing to kind of completely transform herself into something mm -hmm. else and just, like, sail through the, the solar system. Yeah, and we should a, say, I it, guess that's her... What she's done is she's had her body replaced... Yeah. Um, and she has these solar sails, and so she just she doesn't need to eat, and she doesn't need to breathe or anything, and she just kind of can float through the yeah. universe, I guess, you know, just powered by, like, you know, <laughs> solar winds or whatever. Totally, and that's kind of how we meet her. The light, her. I guess, yeah, the light from... from that's star. right. <laughs> yeah, and that's kind of how we meet her, and then throughout the course of it, I mean, you know, again, yeah, not wanting to that first... anyway, but... I What's love this her? first part, right, where she's just just has that Hawkwind thing, you know, space is the place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And she's just smiling, and it's just yeah. her, you know, all this stuff is just about how she's so glad that, you know, there's nobody around. She doesn't have to deal with these awful people anymore. She's a, you know, 
there's some talk about how there's Jovians, I guess. There's like people living on Jupiter, and so she's kind of, you know, she's glad that she hasn't had to actually deal with them yet. That she, you know, that she's sort of like forced to, into this situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, so yeah, this is about comes confronted with her past, like her her previous life, and just kind of yeah. has to deal with these things. And you get even more of that separation. Another thing that I found came up in both of these books was this. It was almost like it, this one, maybe not necessarily to the same degree, but there was this almost like there was a transformative quality or or like a a, a change of identity with both of the books. I mean, in in Brain Banks, it's it's kind of a man and woman combined into one body. Which right. I don't know. I guess depending on what era you're reading, it could be all sorts of different contextualizations for that. But this, even the same thing, like just this transformation of herself physically to kind mm -hmm. of distinguish herself from the rest of people. You know, it's it's uh, like you were touching on some of the '90s kind of vertigo type of feel. That to right. me also feels very similar to a lot of '90s stuff. You know, this kind of alternative and and maybe I'm not describing it proper, but I mean, just this idea of transforming your body and separating yourself and a little bit of right. not quite teen angsty, but like a, a fiercely independent, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I really liked how, um, you know, it starts where you really, you know, you like her. I mean, you, I mean, I guess you always sort of like characters in comics. You relate to the protagonist, unless, you know, it's yeah. an awful comic or something, but yeah, yeah, you yeah. start off being like, Oh yeah, this is really cool. I can see why, you know, she's got it all figured out. And then, you know, you feel like, you know, she's trapped. It's this horrible thing. She's sort of pulled in towards humans. And yeah. then you meet uh, Reet, I think is his name, her, like, ex-husband. And, he, you know, he loves her. And you feel like, at first, you don't like him, I think. That's at least how I felt. You feel like he's just Same, another yeah. person who's trying to, like, drag her down and, like, you mm -hmm. know, take her where she doesn't want to go. But then you meet her son, um... Nile, I think maybe, and yeah, uh, yeah, and I think Nile starts to like. He likes her, and it's sort of like it's like you like her, and Nile is also sort of just learning who this person is, and he likes yeah. her, and he immediately he doesn't know that it's his mother. He no, just sort of is like attracted to her personality, right? like she has these great qualities. Yeah, and then she doesn't want anything to do with Nile. She's just yeah. like, I don't want this. This is what I didn't want. And I thought that was really cool because you feel you feel at that point almost like, you know, like, well, you're a human being reading it. So she's also rejecting you, you know, it's like you're, totally. you're part Absolutely. of the problem. <laughs> so Absolutely. Like, well, at that point, it's kind of like you hate her, right? It's like, oh, my God, yeah, it's really weird. Where's your motherly instincts? They're all gone. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's a it's a really good twist for that, though. Yeah. But then feel somehow, like by the end, you're still with her again. You know what I mean? Because I found yeah. the exact same thing that I had those moments like, oh, my God, you're horrible. And I liked you at the beginning. And then by the end, I kind of liked her again, even though like there was these horrible <laughs> things that happened in the meantime. And yeah, she's yeah. Just trying to find love with this asteroid. And, you know, like it's just <laughs> it's bizarre. But I, I thought it worked really well. Like I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it's very fun. I like that you you just don't know quite where to take it you know you're just yeah. along for the ride and it's really uh yeah i thought it really worked and you really feel a lot of the same stuff that the characters are feeling you feel pulled yeah. around and and i think that's a really good point too like you're along for the ride there's there's so many there's so many things that i read that end up and i like them for it like i like that things work within a genre and i can kind of get a sense of where things are going um i enjoyed that about this that i really didn't have a sense of where it was going to go Mm -hmm. um, there wasn't any like, okay, so this is the part, this is going to happen. Da, da, da. I yeah. mean, there was, there was a few very broad strokes, but I mean, for the most part, I, I felt like I was just along for the ride with this story. And I mean, as I've said before in some videos, like there's something, I don't know why everything has to be long, epic, year long stories these days. I don't know mm -hmm. why we can't have more kind of mini series and more short runs and stuff. Not that it doesn't exist, but mm -hmm. this is the perfect example. Like to me, this is a really tight three issue story. It doesn't yeah. need to be even four issues. It doesn't need to be five. It's three is perfect. And I think it just really works well with those kind of uh, limitations on it, you know, and I'm, I'm assuming that was him completely. I mean, I'm assuming that he had control over how long it was going to be and how much he was going to commit to. You. Yeah, I mean, it says on it, like, it's they're numbered, like, you know, one of three. Yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, more like going into them and proposing the idea. Oh, right. It just, yeah, it seems like they, they weren't, like, 
there was no kind of limitations because I mean, there's some that are six part issues. There's some that are like twelves and that sort of thing. And yeah. it just seems like he, him, because three to me is it's usually four issue miniseries. Three is kind of odd, I guess. Um, but I, it just is so tightly done that I, I think it works really well. There's a yeah, really good, I, like, you know, and it, it, even sure. the name is sort of like that, right? Like it's a bit kind of. Um... You know, it's kind of a cool pun on that, you know, star-crossed lovers or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But you feel like there's a sort of poetic aspect to it that, you know, things just sort of work. Um, it doesn't feel forced what he's trying to do. Yeah, not at all. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I really liked it. Um, I was going to say when you're talking about the layouts, I quite like this one. Um, I don't know if you remember it. It's like you read it backwards. Uh-huh. Which is always a bit hard, you know, when... You know, like people will try and do these weird layouts. I feel <coughs> yeah. like it's really interesting when they work just really easily. You know, you you yeah, like yeah. you don't like Brain Banks has a lot of stuff that I think doesn't work where they're just pushing it so far. Um, it, I mean, it almost to me is like they want to break comics. You know, like they're just yeah, kind of yeah. like let's just you know jam it in until you just sort of like can't handle it anymore, and you're, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> your your brain your brain is just as screwed up as everybody's in the story. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. But <coughs> yeah, I thought his own has a lot of these you know kind of weird things, but they're done in a very kind of subtle way, and yeah, a lot and of um, natural way too. Yeah, yeah. Like I, it reminded me of. Um, did you ever read that Shiz Matrix book by uh, no. Bruce Sterling? No, it sort of reminds me of that. There's a lot of the same kind of themes of like there's like people mining in space and uh, there's a character in it. It's really weird. There's like a, I don't remember. It's a long time, but there's a character you meet as a person, and then later she becomes a hotel, and <laughs> you know like the other characters are like inside this hotel walking around, and it's just really it's just really weird. And I wondered yeah. he doesn't actually mention that i think he would have if it was an influence he seems pretty yeah, like, yeah. open about his influences but that's kind of what it reminded me of or like mm -hmm. um there's a book ufuki hotline by okay. john farley uh that is a bit like that too has some of this has some of the same stuff space mining and it's kind of like you know it's like yeah galactic kind of like like weird star wars i guess without the wars <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> um but, yeah, I mean, so I, I think that this is kind of a hit for both of us, yeah? Yeah, I it's, think so. I would say, yeah, I really liked it. It was good reading it again. Um, I think I might have, I might like it better the second time than I did initially. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was a hit. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a guy for sure that's now on my radar. Every time I see some stuff of his, I completely plan to pick it up, even if it's just a single issue here and there or whatever. Um, yeah, and there's a lot of... Um, He's got a lot of comics, you know. He's a yeah. fun guy that way. There's a lot of yeah. there's a lot of things to. I mean, like I say, there's. I know there's a whole fanzine aspect of his work, the early stuff. I don't. I don't have very much or any of it. I think I don't think I have any of the small ones, um, or maybe just one of them or something. But which is such a great idea too that that's how he would have kind of done a lot of his stuff because he, you know, even from like I said that little blurb, it really does feel like that's his personality that this is what I want to do and I'm going to get it out there no matter what form it takes. You know, it's, it's more about doing the work as opposed to like, you know, approaching a big company and working for somebody. It's just, I'm just going to do it whether you like it or not, you know, yeah, which I love yeah. that kind of attitude. Right. Did you like, did you ever read that Dr. Thirteen he wrote? Uh, no, I haven't. That's, that's sitting yeah, by the Yeah, That's quite good as well. I think yeah, yeah. he doesn't draw that one. Um, yeah. I don't know if he did other stuff where he didn't draw it. I think he kind of always does the art, but does his own thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I, I mean, yeah, I think that one's really good too. Um, but it doesn't seem like it really went on to him doing a lot more. I, maybe he doesn't like just writing without doing the art. Yeah, uh -huh. I, I get the like. He kind of reminds me a little bit of um, like Philip K. Dick or something, where you feel like he's just kind of there's like a kind of feverish sort of intensity to it. Like he's just sort of like, I'm in writing mode and I'm just going to like, you know, just blast at it for until I, you don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. 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 But I mean, I guess that must be somewhat, um, there's also kind of a quality of like to his drawing, you know, like, like almost like doodles. Like there's something, you know, like doodles isn't quite the right word. Um, 
like how you know like if you look at these there's this this sort of like say the detail in the stars or like inner wings like there's something that looks like he's just spending like an incredibly long amount of time on these sort of like repetitive shapes <laughs> and yeah, yeah. details that yeah there must be some kind of some balance between you know his imagination going crazy and just a sort of relatively slow drawing process process yeah yeah where he really just gets into it yeah 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 and i mean it's it's a rare it's a rare thing for me that that happens where it's like this art that doesn't really appeal to me on first glance that just grows on me you know um yeah. it just it doesn't it doesn't normally happen it's it's usually if i don't like it i don't like it or if i like it i like it you know it's yeah it's i feel it's kind of like things. yeah it's just like that's the package it comes in so <laughs> you learn to love it and then you just love it you're just like yeah you know you, i see it i'm like yeah it's 100 percent on board yeah yeah <laughs> It's a really strange thing. It's it, the last thing I expected. Uh, yeah. So, um, should we move on to uh, the brain banks one? You brought sure. it up a little bit about um, just trying to break comics and break a reader. I think the first thing I'll say is I didn't finish the six issues like we talked about before we went right. on. And the one thing that we both kind of agreed on was that it's one of those books that it's, it's a, it's a bit of a chore. Like it's, it's a, it's not an easy read when you're sitting reading the issue. And I was saying that one of the things that was happening with me was after I'd finished the issue, like even the next day and kind of, you know, thinking about it again, mm -hmm. when it sunk in later, it seems relatively straightforward as far as what's going on. But there's something that happens with, the comic itself and the amount of dialogue and the amount of different voices I think that are happening mm -hmm. um, and not a clear, because I mean, even after, you know, I'm, I'm kind of into the fourth issue, I'm still not a hundred percent sure of what, the, <laughs> what the original premise was at the beginning. You know, I know that that's about sheep and there's, they're mining these human minds and consciousness and stuff like that. But right. that, then I'm not a hundred percent sure that that's what the, the story was about because there's all these other things that are happening within it that it makes it a little it's a little convoluted and like right. you're saying i mean it almost feels like that was kind of the point you know to some degree to to make all these voices and and having all these different people and their their kind of um wants and needs i guess throughout this universe what were your kind of initial thoughts about it um it well like i found you're you like starstruck a lot right yeah, I do enjoy it. Yeah, but it's it's the same thing though. I mean, I I like it, but hell, that took me a long time to get through. It's the yeah. it's the exact same thing. For it's me, I struggle. find like Starstruck is harder for me than this. Um, yeah. I like the art better, and so I yeah. think that I want to like Starstruck more. But I find that Starstruck for me, it's like these little bits of something, and I don't know how they exactly are making sense. Like I don't, I feel like Brain Banks is more traditional like it's more of like you know like there's it, it is following a sort of straight narrative like things are happening chronologically and there's not huge gaps in what you are being allowed to see and yeah that's right but it's just like there's this overload of information that's really hard like she seems to want that kind of future shock thing where you just are like i i can't process all of this and so it's like in a straight narrative, she's just piling on things until it's like a bit overwhelming, you know? Like Yeah, totally. I, I think actually you should read the last two because it starts really getting crazy. Uh -huh. Like the fifth issue, I think, <laughs> it starts getting like the art is totally bizarre. It's it's like yeah. close to uh, almost Doctor Strange at that point. Um, like there are these, is this the one? No, it's the it's the actual last one. Hold on. Yeah. It just gets like this kind of, you know, thing where you're just like there are these just all these images and images and like the flow is totally weird and yeah, it's just to it's total madness. It's total confusion. It's I I really like it. You know, like I feel like I think when I read it the first time just for fun, just sitting there reading, I I think I just, you know, kind of kept going and I was like, cool, cool, you know, this is neat. It's sort of about, you know, transgendered issues or what. And then it just gets, and I was like, okay, cool. It's fun that it's just an overload and crazy. And I think I was totally happy to experience it that way. And yeah, 
trying to do this time where I was like, oh, I have to have an opinion on these things. And mm -hmm. when you actually are trying to be like, who are these characters? Like, I found it very confusing. Like, I kept getting confused between... Uh, there's a guy, Drake, I think, who's a sort of right-hand man of uh, Mac. Yeah. And then there's a guy, I can't even think of his name, who I think... He's in the first issue... Like, she goes to his computer or something and, like, steals his handprint. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I just couldn't keep those guys straight after a while because yeah, they're both yeah. such minor characters. Yeah. That I was like, I don't remember which one of these it is. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. I feel like it might, you know, I might need to read it again with, like, I now kind of have them straight, I think, in my head. And I might have to go back and be like, well, who's the guy who's leaving this scene? Or, And there's also things I think she's doing that are just insane, you know? Like, there's the, <clears throat> there's this the elders all those women that are kind of like the sort of they all look exactly the same mm -hmm. <laughs> like, they have these sort of like veils that are covering their identities and They're so it becomes like really important you know which itself. one is yeah. yeah which one's max grandmother versus what you know yeah. and you're just like i can't follow <laughs> who these people yeah. are I think well, and I think in oh. some of that stuff, it feels like that's more to the point, right? Like, because whenever I'm met with stuff like that, where it's so confusing to keep track of, I start getting in the mindset that maybe that's what the writer is setting out <laughs> for. That I've just got yeah, to just maybe. let it go and, and not worry about because in the end, it's just like, these are the men, these are the women, these are our most important characters, the ones who are, you know, like the, the son who was in that kind of tube, that artist's son and stuff, and then her. Right. Um, it seems like, okay, these are the ones that are the standouts that we've got to focus on. The rest are just men and just women. And yeah, they're kind of like you're like, saying, you know, the guy for the handprint, he's just there. He's kind of a link to the past, but it's somebody yeah. that she's going to use to get something to further her goals, right? So, mm -hmm. But in, in this book, I feel like all of everybody sort of ties back. You know, there's a reason. All these scenes that you're maybe kind of like half <laughs> understanding are all really key. Yeah. So there's this whole... You know, it's like ultimately the, the story is about the elders and all, you know, like in the sort of, you know, the plot or whatever. And mm -hmm. all of these other characters are just sort of like, you know, to some degree being played. But it's so, you know, it's so hard to keep track of it, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, it's, and that's a good point because, I mean, just starting to read in this issue number four, that's what it's starting to feel like. Because, I mean, mm -hmm. the first page in this issue four are these elders. Very strange. It's almost like a matrix digital kind of information veil. It's, it's very odd looking, but it's, it starts to feel like, yeah, they are the ones that are orchestrating because go mm -hmm. get the sun back and they're really kind of running the plays, you know, to some degree. Yeah. And they're like above the pool, right? They kind of yeah. have, you know, jurisdiction over the pool that she's a part of. And, yeah. um, yeah, I, uh, I mean, as far, as far as that kind of thing goes, what did you think about the world that she creates? I mean, there's one thing that does appeal to me about her writing is that it's a very kind of alien world. I mean, Starcross, sure, that's an alien world, but there's still things that you can recognize. With mm -hmm. this one, it seems to be taking so many influences from all over the place. Yeah. Um, that it just creates this world that does kind of, even though there's things that you do recognize, it just, it feels really alien. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like it's a book where on, on every level, like it's like the art, the writing, the coloring, the lettering, like all of these things are used in these totally crazy ways that are yeah. really, you know, if you're, if you're just interested in like, you know, how far can you push comics or, you know, like I would imagine this is like, to me, what it reminds me of is sort of newer, you know, J.H. Williams, the third art, you know, yeah. like maybe that stuff he did that Sandman that just recently came out. It's yeah, yeah. where it's sort of like, you know, oh, this, this is painted and this is like done as a, you know, a very kind of crude, simple drawing. And this is a pencil mm -hmm. sketch, but they're all in the same panel. Like he, uh -huh. it's, uh, what's his name? Temujin. He's doing that stuff, you know, in like 97 or something. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like really kind of, it's just really strange. It's really pushing. Totally. Well, to I mean, just comics, for, just for a sample of, of something like, so here's kind of the main art. And right. then as it kind of transitions, um, we get a transition to, you know, uh, let me see the camera there at uh, what you see on this page, which is yeah. just kind of even more distorted in things, which is, is kind of cool. 
Um, that's and then, like in Logan's head, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 Um, there's that whole thing of like, like thing, I thought like that was really cool about page. this, like kind of perspective, you know, like about how everybody has their own kind of mind, their own way of understanding the world. And like yeah. sometimes, you know, like there's a, I think it might be in the fifth issue, like uh, Ellis enters like a sheep's brain. Oh yeah, really? <laughs> you know, so you're in this sheep and the sheep is just kind of like going on about bliss, bliss, bliss. And it's just totally weird, right? Like it's- ah, Interesting. Yeah, I, I like that. I never, the, the thing I think I struggled most with, I don't know if you were like this, I really didn't like the red coiling text. Uh-huh. I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I don't really. Re- I don't really know what it is. I don't know if it's like her. You know what? You know what it is. It's psychically attacking the irritating other person. Is what it is. <laughs> it's what? It's just irritating. Is what it is. Like again, it's one of those things where. What do you mean? I got to turn the page and I got to. Yeah, you just you endlessly know, like, turning it around and it's yeah. hard to see and. Yeah. Well, and then I kind of read a couple of them. I'm like, well, I don't even understand what that means. I don't understand yeah. what text. So it's so almost like ah. Fuck it. I'm not even going to read the next one, you know? Yeah, yeah. I think I feel I a little bit like that with, um, I read Stray Bullets. Yeah. And there's all these Amy race car, it, you know, every, you know, story will have one Amy race car bit, which is sort of like a fantasy world. And I just, okay. I think I just can't do them. I just, uh, every, and I know it's a part of it. Like everybody says like, oh, you have to read Amy race car because it, you know, there's a kind of like way that it mirrors the world and like come, but it just, I just can't do it. So I just was always <laughs> skip those yeah. ones. You know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like it's kind of bad. Like, you know, it's probably would help to know what's in those, but for sure. To be honest, knowing, I mean, it probably wouldn't. It probably would just make it harder to understand. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it would just be another well, level think, of like. And I think you kind of hit on the main thing too that, that honestly didn't completely gel in my mind until you said it. It's just like this look at, at everybody's perspective on their world, right? I mean, that's that's a huge thing. So stuff like that is probably just more to do with her perspective. Um, and what I was going to say yeah, earlier on too is... Yeah, sort of general theme of minds, right? Like, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like, I don't know if you've you got this, I kind of head. felt that like the two big ideas to me were identity and um, yeah. like... She does, I guess, like invasion, you know, like it's so there's a lot of sort of there's there's rape. There's like these sort of psychic invasions of people. There's, Uh you know, and this whole sort of, I guess, almost kind of like biblical stuff to do with, you know, like what is what is humans? What are humanity's purpose? And, you know, can you deviate from the sort of patterns of nature? Is that okay? Is that is that what you're supposed to do? Or is that like this? great offense to you know like there's that thing from like the gospel of thomas about i've I've seen people share that around um you know where it's it's like the male must become female and all this stuff um that I, i think is like yeah it's sort of like is that you know god's intention that humans sort of you know help in evolution and are, you know, is anything we do okay? Like one of the, one of the elders says something like that. Like there's nothing unnatural that people can do because we're part of nature. So, Uh uh I mean, I feel that like somebody who's into sort of, you know, all this kind of transhumanism stuff would really, there's a, this book has a lot more ideas, I guess, maybe in a way than Starcrossed. Like it's, it's more of like a, you know, if you want something kind of really cerebral and, you know, if that's what appeals to you in comics, then I think this is a comic that would be really exciting because there's so much. Totally. There's so much going on here. There's so many. Yeah. There's so much territory being mined. Yeah. And all of it, like, I don't know if you thought this. I thought that, like, the framework, I, like, I really love these covers. Um, Like these, you know, this first one, it's like, there's a crucifix, right? Kind of made in yeah. this background and then they all kind of seem to somehow relate and the last one which is sort of like there's this wholeness you know they've kind of somehow come to some resolution there's a kind of yeah like a eucharist it looks like you know or some kind of like that seems like these kind of religious images kind of like to me that's i was trying to figure out what he was doing and i thought they were kind of like uh stained glass windows maybe was the um i should say like i like this art quite a bit as well um yeah so did i yeah some flaws with it like, I think he's, 
it's a little difficult to tell people apart, which leads to some of the confusion. Like he tends to draw everyone a little bit the same. I looked into this guy and it seemed like he was a, an inker for a long time. Okay. And then this is, I think one of his, this is his main, you know, sort of full drawn comic piece. Uh, but he may have done, I think a little bit of drawing somewhere else too. Um, and then he ended up going into video games and I'm okay. yeah. doing that kind of stuff. Yeah. But yeah. I think it's, I mean, it's really interesting art. Like it's, you know, he's doing a lot of really creative things that are, yeah, very, very different. And I mean, I can only imagine this must have been a difficult book to draw. Like oh, there's gotcha. so much, you know, you have these panels where there's like, you know, four captions and a narration box or two different kinds of narration boxes. And, mm -hmm. and then felt, all the internal voices talking over each other and, you know, all the, uh, yeah, it's. There's yeah. a lot of stuff too where I just don't even know how they did it. Like there yeah, yeah. are, there's stuff where there's like a drawing that's like in blue, that seems to be sitting on top of the page. I don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I mean, I'm just not even sure how they even managed to do it at that time. Like I guess it was computer colored, and it's. And it just really feels like they were trying to push everything <laughs> forward, you know, and, and and give you that, that future shock, that sort of like. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, one sec. Hold on, I'm going to take you upstairs. There seems to be some banging at the door here. Hold on. On the go. Oh, no, that's okay. Mom. Oh, a lollipop. Say hi. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. The door there. Sure. Yeah. Um. Uh, I can't remember what I was going to say. Um. Yeah, I mean, I, I completely intend to finish it. There's no doubt about it. But it just, it, like we said already, it's one of those that it was just a bit of a, a bit of a slog going through the individual issues. Right. And yeah, I wonder, I I wonder how bit. much input she has on like the visual style of the world. I'm assuming that she has some more than other, or maybe the same as other writers. I don't know what the kind of relationship or the ratio is with comics artists and writers. Period. Um, if a lot of the writers do have a lot of say in how the world is portrayed or if it's just like here's here's the text here's a couple of notes and that's it go wild she seems like she's probably she just doesn't have, would have a description she, uh -huh. she would just probably write out a description of what it looked like and then <laughs> it would be up to the artist to try to Keep I, mean, I think some art some writers I think will really say you know how many panels this should be or you know, really like lay it all out, like where everybody is and that. Yeah. But I, yeah, I, I would, I, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. I would imagine that it's probably, she just wrote out, you know, these are the captions and like yeah. kind of what should be going on generally. And yeah, I don't know. I suspect there's a lot of, probably a lot of work <laughs> for mm -hmm. the artist on this one. Uh -huh. That's, I don't know, but. Yeah. And I think like you touched on already, it's, it's perfect for if, you want something that's more cerebral and it just feels like one of those books that there's so much going on that you can read into it again. I mean, maybe this kind of goes with the theme of like the individual's mind and perception and stuff. Whoever's reading it is going to get something completely different out of it because there's so much going on and, mm -hmm. and, and there's so many things that you can read into it. I mean, I never even thought about the religious stained glass aspect of the covers, for example, that never yeah. even crossed my mind, you I know, mean, so I mean, it's it may like, not have crossed their minds either. Right? <laughs> yeah. 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 Just well, it, but I've it seems like but... it's one of those books that it, it very well might have, you know what I mean? Like, it seems mm -hmm. like one of these kind of very precise, like as kind of chaotic and as dense it is. That's, mm -hmm. that's one thing that even seems like with starstruck too, that there's this chaos element, but there is still stuff that's like, this is, how I want it presented, you know, this is like specific, you know? Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's definitely like with starstruck, I don't know if you bought any of those new versions that came out. A couple of them. Yeah. Not all of them. Though. There's something really sort of strange, <laughs> right? The sort of way they worked from, I, I think it was like a play or something. And then they, right. worked, yeah. they worked it into comics and then it's like just really bizarre how they've done it. And like, yeah. I guess what they just published is like the sort of definitive way they want it to be seen, but it's only the yeah. first third. But I think for fans, it must just be totally confusing, like why yeah. 
<laughs> you know, like you you read a comic in the eighties, and then it just never it just keeps coming out in these bizarre reeditions. Yeah, exactly. That's like basically that, that the you same never story. you still haven't progressed the story <laughs> beyond where you were. You know, yeah. like if you were reading them in the eighties, you're still waiting for it to keep going. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> right. Yeah. Look, there's new stuff. Oh no, it just has these girl guides in it now. All of a sudden, what the hell is that about? That's not really. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I'm going to probably get that Starstruck, uh, that new version, and try and read it. Yeah, I think there's, like, isn't there, like, a hardcover version? And then there's also, like, a, a, um, a, the oversized editions, too, or something, oh, is isn't there? Whatever they call it. The treasury, the treasury-sized editions, too. I think there's something like that as well out there now, so. they. Put, I know they were putting them out as, like, magazines, but I just... Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, no, it's, it's too much. Um. So, I mean, as far as, like, the theme of Helix, these seem to be, in my mind, I mean, again, not having read all of the Helix titles yet, it really feels like these are ones that, this is the territory they wanted to kind of mine with sci-fi. Goodbye, Lollipop. Goodbye, Lollipop. <laughs> show, show the Lollipop. Here, come in. Oh, I got it. Here, show it right up here. There you go. There's, what is that? Oh, that's the last bit of the lollipop. Say so long, lollipop. So long, lollipop. <laughs> Thank you for coming down and sharing that. Um, it really seems like there's uh, this is kind of what it was set up to be, is, is what I'm trying to get at. Right. Um, one of, we don't have too much time left. One of the things that I just wanted to briefly say about the Black Lamb, as much as I like Timothy Truman, mm -hmm. um, it really doesn't seem like it seems like a story that could have appeared anywhere, um, that right. there was nothing specific tying it to this kind of helix sci-fi kind of world. I mean, there was a few sci-fi elements in it, but at its at its heart, it was what he's really good at, kind of a, a pulp type character that has a long lineage and we're just catching a kind of glimpse at it. Whereas these other ones really seem like more of the intent of this imprint to like really create this science yeah. fiction that's going to appeal to people who are just really into sci-fi, you know, cause it's gonna be something very different and specific, you know? Yeah. I think that, um, I think my favorite one is probably time breakers. Yeah. Um, it's either time breakers or star crossed, but, uh, I think the, the, those three was with, uh, brain banks. And then, um, those are probably my, those are the best I think of what I've read. And then I think vermilion is like a, a, you know, close second, uh, tier or whatever. I think that yeah, doesn't, no. It sort of does work and doesn't work, and it's really yeah. strange and, you know. Well, yeah, and that, that one, the, the ones that I've read of that, I tie that closely into this Brain Banks, too, because it's, it's a little dense. It's really unique as well. I was enjoying it. Once I kind of got over the hump of a few issues, mm -hmm. I really started feeling it a little more. And now that I've kind of filled out most of the run, I'm kind of anxious to read it again. So the Time Breakers one, how, was that a very specific world, too, or was it, like, did it seem like... It's more, I mean, it's, it's, it's more like, it just takes place on Earth in the present. So it okay. doesn't have all of this sort of like weird world creation stuff. Um, yeah. It sort of feels a bit like maybe Doctor Who or something like that. Like okay. it's, yeah. it's basically like, this. What, <laughs> what I think is really great about it, it has this amazing kind of, you know, sort of central concept, which is that she sort of flipped the, you know, the sort of rules of time travel forever have been... You, the problem is, you know, you go back in time and you meet your dad and then your dad doesn't meet your mom and blah, blah, blah. And so yeah. this, you can't have these time paradoxes. But she says that actually the universe thrives on time paradoxes. So that's what, <laughs> that's actually what it's built on. And so these guys are like this team that are collected from different individuals across, you know, the the years and they're just going out to try to create time paradoxes. Really interesting. So they're, yeah, yeah, they're literally just trying to break time. That's their yeah, whole. Yeah. So they just uh, are like <laughs> trying to conceive of these like, you know, bigger and better ways to sort of destroy the continuity of <laughs> fuck everything up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I really liked it. I think it's really fun. Um, really, a really good comic worth, uh, worth collecting. Yeah, for sure. Well, and, and, and as I think like all of these are, you know, I mean, if anybody understands the 50 cent bins, it's you, you know what I mean? Like it's all this stuff that's, it's so much fun to kind of be able to rediscover this stuff. And especially when you're dealing with a smaller imprint where 
it really is it's it's been relatively easy to find every single title it's just a yeah. nice adventure you know you're really you getting it yeah nice you feel with this play. stuff like it doesn't even matter like you could go on the last day of a convention or something or like you could go to a store that's been picked over like a thousand times and it's yeah, like and it's nobody dope. wants this so it's yeah, just you're exactly, gonna sit there yeah, forever yeah. waiting for you you know it's like yeah. there's just no no eyes on it at all so yeah, yeah. i think that is kind of a fun thing about it that you yeah, there's it shows up quite a bit because I think it's just quite far from what people are looking for. Mm -hmm. Which well, I mean, you know, I think maybe if more people knew about it, they would be into it because I think that it's doing a lot of things that are sort of more, you know, there's more appeal for them now. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe yeah. it's like, you know, like I I talk about Snowfall, but I don't know that I don't know anybody else that's reading that or talking about it or saying it's good. So it could just also be, you know, it could be the future. 50 cent bin comic you know <laughs> yeah 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 that people are going to rediscover yeah 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 it's like every now and then somebody's like we're gonna you know push things forward and go mm -hmm. for it and then you know <laughs> even though we have zero audience for it and i mean i'm curious what it was like at the time with these titles obviously it wasn't fantastic because it only lasted two years um but I, I don't know their kind of end goal to start out with maybe it was something that was supposed to be short-lived like I, i'm yeah, just i don't know like i mean received. My favorite sort of modern science fiction writer is Greg Egan, and mm -hmm. I think he's probably in a similar boat, you know? Like, I mean, I think, I don't think that he's like, you know, like, you know, you can't walk into a store and just find his stuff sitting there waiting. It's like, you know, you've got to, you got to order it from somewhere, and yeah. uh, it's always out of print because it's like low runs, and, you know, uh, similar to Matt Howarth, he runs his own kind of web page for you know, promoting his stuff, and it's, I don't know if you've ever been to the Matt Howarth page, but it's, it's no, just I totally crazy, yet, no. you know, like, it, yeah. <laughs> just a giant web of, like, you know, here's all the stuff you can order on PDF, and mm -hmm. a list of everything he's ever done, and, and cool. it looks yeah. like a very old-fashioned web page, you know, like, he probably did it really early, and I'm sure just he did it all himself, you know, and it's just, yeah, it's yeah, awesome. That sounds great, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we did have a couple of people watching it a few times. I didn't get to many comments. There wasn't tons of them, but I just wanted to say hi to Rez. Rez was watching as well, oh, too. Oh, hey. <laughs> um, and she says, Johnny Zero, hey, hey, hey. Um, so I'm assuming there's still oh, a couple hey, hey. Of people watching now. So um, I think with that, maybe we'll, we'll start to wrap it up. Sure. Uh, any other kind of final thoughts about things? We should, we should for sure keep doing this, I think, as we kind of sure. get all the, get all the series. I, you know, like we talked about off air, mm -hmm. there's yeah, just not totally anybody yeah, talking yeah, yeah. about this stuff. You know, I, know I think that, that uh, Sleepy Reader right. said he read um, Time Breakers and really loved it. So I think yeah, yeah. And I've seen like, in a couple of his haul right. videos, he's finding the odd issue here and there. I think recently he found some brain bank stuff. He said so. yeah, he said he completed a brain banks run. So oh, I would be go. curious. Yeah. He would. I, I suspect he would dislike brain banks. Uh -huh. <laughs> he might. He might yeah. like. I think. I feel like. Where I have a lot of enthusiasm for the fact that it's just smashing you until your mind breaks. I feel like he would not like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's impossible. <laughs> and see that but as I a mean, very bad quality in a comic. Yeah, but yeah. But with I don't know. His, I mean, I'm, you know, I always with his heavy sci-fi background, he might get something different out yeah, of it. Yeah, you never know. Especially he's, like me, you know. I feel yeah. like he's a, a more, um, I don't know. He's probably like a smarter reader than me, so he gets, he can get, he grasps things on like a better... Uh, I don't know what. Yeah, yeah on a different some higher level. level. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> so I, f I would definitely love to have him be part of it. I feel like he might yeah, just for be sure. like, you know, Helix sucks. <laughs> 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 hey, he's reading Rebirth stuff, so he can't. He can't right, possibly right. that this sucks. Yeah, he's good. I'm, oh, glad. I'm glad someone's reading it. He can tell me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so don't go away yet. I'll, I'll just kind of stop the broadcast and just say that um, thanks very much, everybody, for watching. Um, stick around. Oh, Don Fletcher is here. Thanks for the art talk. Thanks for watching, Don. Always a pleasure. Um, yeah, we'll be back at some point. And uh, Johnny Zero, holy crap. Like I said, he's broken his cherry. That's it. It's all yeah, over now. Go. Just People another see random his face. Guy. It's done. Hunt him down. Secret you know where he lives. <laughs> All right, I'm going to push the big red button. Thanks a lot for watching, right, cool. everybody. We'll talk yeah, to you. Yeah, see you, man. Bye. Right. Thanks for having me.